Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, we've now arrived to a different concept. So we've talked primarily about structures and different kind of systems. We're going to talk about something right now that incorporates a, a couple of the different things we've talked about already, um, and it's the aqueous humor pathway. And this is going to be a really good prerequisite or precursor to when we start talking about glaucoma, which is something that I definitely think opticians should know more about. I run across a lot of opticians who do not have a good handle on glaucoma. And even though you're not likely to ever be responsible for treating glaucoma, there are loads and loads of patients who have it. And it's like, I always say, if you don't know about it, you will not look competent in your position. So I really like this one. I, I want you to pay close attention to this. I think it's going to serve you very well. And it's actually a very, very interesting part of the eye. So why don't we jump into it right now? Now, so we've got a diagram here and let's pull out the pen so that we can kind of guide our way through this. So you'll, you'll notice here that we have the cornea and then underneath the cornea, the anterior chamber, then you have all the other structures we've talked about. The sclera is here and the iris is there. I just wanted to kind of highlight that because some of Sometimes these diagrams, it's kind of hard to pinpoint what you're looking at, even though it's labeled. And of course, the crystalline lens is right here. And we're going to be talking about the posterior chamber in that area, too. So remember, anterior chamber is anterior to the cornea. Um, and it's kind of the space between the posterior, sorry, posterior to the cornea, my, my, my apologies, anterior to the iris. So and it's like that area that's kind of wedged between the back of the cornea and the front of the iris, okay? And in the posterior chamber is the small area behind the iris in front of the lens. This is going to be an important concept to keep in mind, okay? So aqueous humor is secreted in the posterior chamber, okay? In front of the lens, behind the iris, by the non-pigmented epithelium of the, and we should know this because we've covered this already, the ciliary processes, okay? So that's where aqueous humor starts. It is those ciliary processes are constantly producing this aqueous humor. It never stops, it's always going on, okay? Now, the root of aqueous humor flows, uh, flow first begins in the posterior chamber, and then it moves its way through to the anterior chamber via the, sorry, anterior chamber, I got a little ahead of myself, via the pupil, okay? So you'll notice here that in the diagram, that blue, these blue lines here, okay, right there, and they kind of work their way all the way through. This is the this is the flow that we're going to follow. So we've already started here. The, the ciliary processes, the epithelium produces the aqueous humor. It flows here through to the posterior chamber, and then it kind of comes through here. The pupil is right here, and then it makes its way into the anterior chamber. Okay, so this constant flow is going on all the time. And remember, the aqueous humor is responsible for a lot of stuff. It's bathing the, uh, the lens. It's also nourishing the backside of the cornea and all the other structures in between. So it's like very much because a lot of these structures are avascular, no blood supply. This is like the blood of the eye. It's the nourishment. It provides all the different things that it needs, the, the different tissues need to survive. Now, the fluid, now we're going to talk about drainage. So we talked about where it's produced. Now, the fluid drains where the posterior cornea, the back of the cornea, and the anterior, the front of the iris meet at the iridocorneal angle. You're going to hear the term angle often, 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 all right? So that's the little area, that little wedge right i'm going to change colors uh, let's try purple actually there's already purple on there let's try orange uh, there's orange too let's go let's go purple so this area here we'll try to make an angle this spot here is the angle and it's very very important when we start assessing people for risk of glaucoma and things like that which we'll touch on a little bit more uh, so here it flows through the trabecular meshwork which we just had a little bit i just had it pop up in the corner there on the diagram to the to schlem's canal 
where it eventually drains into the episcleral vein, goes down, <clears throat> goes down into the into the blood system, and it kind of just kind of gets worked out that way. So I want you to really think about this. It, it's produced in the posterior chamber, flows through the pupil, goes to the anterior chamber, drains in the angle. That's where the trabecular meshwork is found, kind of like a spongy tissue that soaks it up, and then it kind of works itself out of the eye. Why is this important? Because it's a constant flow. That flow allows the fluid inside that aqueous humor to not be stagnant it's always being replenished always being changed and it and makes sense because we talked about how the aqueous humor is a metabolic substance it allows other tissues in the body to oh, sorry in the eye to be nourished therefore it has to have a constant supply if if you think of that of, of the aqueous humor like a type of food for the tissue well, the tissue is going to eat up all the, whatever, all the nutrients in there, and then it's garbage, so it needs to go out, and it's continuously being reproduced and being pumped out and, and on a constant basis. So pretty interesting thing, right? Um, now let's touch on a few other things about this. So now aqueous humor has a number of functions within the eye. We already talked about the nourishment, but it has another, a couple of other ones. So it maintains intraocular pressure extremely important okay um, it also prov it's providing nourishment for avascular tissue which I've mentioned a number of times and immunoglob uh, sorry immunoglobulins uh, which are basically uh, you know white blood cells and different uh, immune immunological cells uh, provide immune response so keeping things making sure that if there's any kind of pathogen or anything it's responding so that the body can then have an immunological response and also provides a certain amount of refractive index for vision uh, when we talk about vision as a whole we can talk about uh, a schematic eye which you know the eye has been figured out to have different refractive surfaces refractive indices in the different fluids and things like that it's something we're going to talk about a little bit more in optics the aqueous humor also provides a little bit of refractive index to give the eye its natural focusing power. Okay, so the balance between uh, aqueous production and drainage is critical to maintain normal intraocular pressure. We short form that with IOP, and it's a normal intraocular pressure is approximately 18 to 20 milligram, millimeters of mercury. That pressure measurement is something that's extremely important to understand. Now, normal intraocular pressure is different for every patient. So if you have patients, if you're seeing files, and you have patients that have you know 22 milligram, uh, 22. Uh, millimeters of mercury as a, as a reading or if they have 16 and the doctor is not concerned not everybody's going to fall within an 18 and 20 there's different benchmarks for everybody but it's very important to understand that in order to maintain whatever that number is for that person the normal number there has to be proper production and proper drainage okay and failure to drain aqueous humor will lead to and if you don't know this you can probably figure it out just by what we've talked about increased IOP a condition known as hypertension ocular hypertension sometimes we hear about cardiovascular hypertension increased blood pressure so very similar increased eye pressure is referred to as hypertension is it glaucoma not necessarily yet okay so we think of glaucoma as being increased intraocular pressure it's not always the case uh, hypertension is increased ocular pressure, and it is a risk of glaucoma, which is usually nerve atrophy, which we're going to go into much more detail about this uh, very shortly in, in the, uh, a couple of lectures from now. So I want you to remember this very, very important stuff that in order for normal intraocular pressure to be maintained and in order for the eye to have all the benefits of the aqueous humor, there has to be constant production and there has to be constant drainage. And there's a few moving parts in this and there's a few places where things can go wrong. And if anything goes wrong along the way, the patient will have problems. So why is this important to us? Well, we talked about production versus drainage equals IOP. You need to understand that. You need to know that if a person has low or high intraocular pressure, there's a pretty good chance that it's due to this whole pathway we just talked about. Something's going wrong somewhere. High IOP equals ocular hypertension equals risk of glaucoma. Very important for opticians to know this because if they're seeing the doctor and they're being told that they have high IOP, 
you know that patient's coming back for regular checks to be made, to be monitored, and they may end up on drops depending on the cause, which we are going to discuss a little bit more in detail later. However, it's important to know that if your patient has ocular hypertension, they are being monitored on a regular basis. Um, aqueous humor is important to keep internal structure nourished. We just talked about that in depth, right? All that, all those tissues inside that don't have blood coursing through them, they require some kind of nourishment. Aqueous humor is that nourishment. And I want you to remember the angle structure and trabecular meshwork because when we start talking about glaucoma very shortly, that area is the number one kind of target area that we talk about when it comes to glaucoma. There are two primary types of glaucoma. Um, there's also a third and there could be others. Uh, there's research is always ongoing on glaucoma. However, the main causes are always related to that area, uh, two different ailments to the area, but it's always related to that angle structure and the trabecular meshwork. So those are two structures that you definitely need to know when it comes to the aqueous humor pathway, because it's going to be very good at understanding things like glaucoma in the future. And that's it for that part. So we've learned a lot of things today. I hope you've taken notes in the workbook and I uh, hope you're ready to learn more about it because in a couple lectures, we're gonna be talking glaucoma as well. All right, that's it for today. See you in the next one.